Howdy, folks. Blue Collar Piper. And I'm coming at you with a little tour of the woods. Not just any woods, but woods literally in the middle of a town. Uh, I knew about this place for a while. There's a couple of walk footpaths through here. But you can, uh, yeah, you can see what it's all about. Uh, basically, I walk from my apartment down the roadways, turn a corner, walk down a little further. You can hear the train off in the distance. If you listen really close, you can even pick up the sound of traffic probably less than 200 feet away. So you ask what brings me out here? <laughs> well, I figured I'd give y'all something new to look at. Other than my, my little uh, apartment. Well, darn it. My bowl's doing, please. Okay, well. Uh, come on, coffee. Find a spot. You have a problem sitting down your coffee and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see, yep, that's done. Okay, so I uh, just finished a bowl of Pearson Special Reserve 2012 in my Canadian. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little video. Blue Collar Piper's Tips Time, that's right. And considering A, the gift that I received from Mr. Chris Morgan, and B, it has now become fairly widely available currently on Pipes and Cigars, though I dare say it's probably not going to stay that way very long. This one is going to be basically how to get the most out of your Briar Cigar. So, that's what this is all about, the Briar Cigar. Now... Uh, by the way, awesome containers. You never know when to come in handy. I don't like putting the plug down all the way in mine. But, you know, if you do whatever. First tip, when you take the plug out of your buyer cigar, drop it in the container. Because that plug is just small enough to be a tote pain in the rear to find. So put it in the container so you don't lose it. Now, the next thing we want to cover a little bit is packing and tamping your uh, briar cigar. And this time, courtesy of Silver Shadow, it's going to be some Frog Mortons on the bayou. And basically, this, this stuff right here, man, this is awesome stuff. And it smokes really, really well in a briar cigar. So basically all you're going to do, I don't know how much of this you can see, but you're going to feed and tamp. Feed and tamp. Don't tamp it too tight, but tamp it tight enough that it's going to get a consistent burn all the way down. That's about one of those things that's very similar is the amount of pressure you want on your pipe one thing that this pipe and regular pipes have in common. Now, go ahead and pack it up. And when you pack your pipe, okay, the new ones especially have a threaded inside. Okay, go ahead and pack the end of it good and firm. Okay. Do not, if at all possible, do not pack this thing up to the uh, up to the rim. If you pack it to the rim, you're going to cake up those threads. So you want to keep it below that rim and below the thread line. Okay. Now, it's an awesome smoking pipe. It always delivers a good clean smoke, nice dry smoke. It does require a little bit of a technique adjustment. It has its own learning curve. So, uh, 
it definitely makes number one. Okay, when tamping, you need to find a smaller gauge tamper. Okay, those big, nice, big, like dime size ones. This is ain't gonna cut it in this case. Okay, in this case, I'm using the, my brawn and pipes tamper. <coughs> and let's get this bad boy lit up. Now when you light it, you need to turn it as you light it. Okay, and what that'll do is that'll that'll get the whole surface of it good and hot. Toasting it just like you would a regular bowl, except instead of moving the lighter around, you move the you move the cigar pipe around. Okay. Number two, you want to avoid pointing it down too much. You'll see why here shortly. Once you got it off and going, whoop, how about that for a catch? <laughs> now you got to remember, these are small gauge. It, it's a tall bowl, but it's a narrow bowl. So you want to puff on it. And I don't mean take deep hot puff. I mean take short quick puff. The narrowness of the bowl will actually mean that it will go out faster. Mm. Now that's a good smoke. Also you want to make sure that the, uh, the Briar Cigar is rotated as you smoke it. I mean, those of you guys who are cigar smokers, you'll almost do it instinctually. Because remember, heat rises. The heat inside the chamber of your Briar Cigar also rises. So you want to keep that heat distributed around the Briar. Don't take deep, long puffs on it, because then you'll build up too much heat. Uh, the briar cigars, if smoked properly, will color only slightly, very little actually, and that's completely normal. You will, of course, have to occasionally tamp. That's all it takes. By the way, if you ain't pulled the trigger on some frog mortons on the bayou, and you like a little perik, it definitely does the job. One of the other reasons I wanted to come out here in the woods is because I actually wanted to uh, see if I could spot around and find me some wood. I've got it in my head, I guess, that I'm going to try and uh, make a primitive longbow. So I'm out here spotting what kind of wood I got going on. I'm not kidding about this place literally literally being dead middle of town. I mean this place is like dead middle of Richmond. It's a fairly sizable undeveloped area. And I think a lot of the reason is because the terrain in this area is exceptionally hilly in this small area. So it's fairly dense hilly terrain and there's a floodplain runs right through the middle of it. But it's landlocked on all sides by city. So, just goes to show you, even if you happen to live in the town, you can always find a little country if you're willing to live. Now, as you're smoking it and camping it, some of the ash is going to break loose. Now, I'm sitting out in the woods, so I really don't care too much about it. But when I'm sitting at home, I lay my head back, hold a cigar up a little bit.
The reason I do that is because that hot ash will fall out of there. Not the cherry, but a little bit of the hot ash will actually come out as you're camping and smoking your bowl. So, when you camp it good, hot ash falls out. Of course, it gets cold before it hits anything, but still, you end up with a lap full of ash. So, make sure when you're sitting indoors smoking this thing, just hold it up a little bit. Mm. Excellent, excellent smoking pipe. Yep, and uh, usually with a good, a good slow burning English, I can easily get 30 to 45 minutes out of it. Packed fairly light with half and half, it'll usually deliver about a 15 minute. Uh, I haven't had a chance to smoke a flake yet, but I've got some on the way. Good old Peter Stockbee luxury baby flake. One of my personal favorite flakes. But on with that, I'm going to uh, go down here and see what kind of wood we got going on. And uh, see if there's anything worth uh, worth taking. I want to take what I want to do is I want to take two staves. I want to take one for uh, playing with immediately. And I want to take one to season for a long time. I figure I'll give it a few months to hang out in the house. And then, uh, unless I can look up and find something I can take that I can split that's uh, pretty decent, which I'm thinking about a section of what I'm sitting on now might be pretty decent. It's a uh, piece of a broken off fallen tree that has. Uh, by the looks of it, been here for at least a couple of years. Trees have actually grown up under it, and it's actually off the ground. The wood is actually pretty sound, so that's what I'm thinking we're going to go with. And uh, seeing as it's been here for years, it'll be here plenty of time later. Hopefully, long enough for me to get a hatchet. <laughs> Uh, it's a little too thick for me to be batoning with my, uh, with my Mora, so, I mean, I'm sure the Mora's probably tough enough for it, but I just don't want to risk damaging that knife, because I don't have a whole lot of good knives yet, good field knives, oh yeah, man, as I knew would happen, it's gone out. Now, when you're talking, like I said, especially when you're talking, you'll find out that these things, they go out quick. Don't be scared to relight it. It don't take much. Yes. Any of you guys out there that uh, has been considering grabbing a briar cigar, I would strongly recommend it. And uh, when I come back, we're going to uh, cover cleaning it. So, you guys, stay tuned. Found a piece. Half and half in my little Morgan.
Missouri Mersham pipe. Missouri Mersham? You should make some more of these guys. These are awesome pipes. Howdy folks, this is Blue Collar Piper, and uh, yay, I made it back from the woods. Uh, we're going to uh, continue with the tips, the rest of the tips for the Briar Cigar and get the most out of it. Now, uh, you've had a nice smoke from your Briar Cigar, the Briar Cigar, so now you need to uh, clean it. So what I recommend, get you some 100 proof alcohol, something 100, 150 proof, whatever, you know, buy something cheap. Uh, in my case, I just use some 100 proof Tavarsky vodka. Uh, disassemble it. Make sure your cap's out. Make sure your mouthpiece is out. So that you've got just your buyer cigar. And you should see nice daylight through there. Okay. Now what I like to do is I don't try to scrub the inside of the bowl portion too much because obviously you want cake in there to help protect your buyer cigar from, you know, repeated smokes. But you also don't want it to get too big. So, uh, after it's had a chance to cool down real good, I just take a little bit of alcohol dipped on a swab and just very lightly swab out any loose stuff. And that's, that's really about all I do with, with the inside of the chamber. And then what I'll do is I will run it through and get some alcohol in that draft hole. Look at that nastiness. Yeah, buddy. Make sure it's good and clean. Okay. And then I'll do the same with the this one, the bristle uh, cleaner. Yeah, scrub it up real good, make sure that draft hole's nice and clear. Then what I like to do is I like to bend the bristle into a U. Dip it in a little bit of alcohol. And there's that chamber on the back side, the, the, the reverse calabash chamber. Make sure you squeeze it tight. You do not want any alcohol to get on the outside of your briar. It will bork your finish. So basically, I'll bend it in a U, and then I'll work it in there. Okay? And then what I'll do is I'll actually lean it up at a hard angle. Now what this does is that cleans that shoulder inside there. You get all that, that off of there. Okay? Then you repeat the process, but this time you use a dry cleaner. Okay? Bend the U, slip it in, give it a spin, push it up into the shoulder, give it a spin, and it takes off more gunk. Okay? And then finally what you want to do is take the dry side of your cleaner, run it through your mouth tip, just like you would any normal pipe. Okay? And then where it's concaved, right there, snap. Um, you can get a piece of paper towel or a shop cloth or anything like that and basically just take the edge of it and push it down in that cave. Wipe it out real good. Then you just simply reassemble your pipe. Okay. And bam. 
this bad boy right here is ready to go back in its case before it's in a smoke. I re strongly recommend letting it rest. Um, it's got thin walls. Be nice to it. It'll last you a lifetime. Definitely recommend again. Can't recommend enough this pipe. I recommend that uh, if you get the chance, get you one. Um, they're well worth the money. Um, some will call it a gimmick. I'm going to call it an innovation because it works. It works really well. It smokes really well. And get you one. I mean, get you one before you run out because it's only, they're not going to last long on, smoke, uh, on pipes and cigars. So, that said, I'm going to go ahead and put this monstrous video together. And I hope you guys all have an awesome day. And uh, thanks to Morgan, Chris Morgan. Thank you, Silver Shadow. And uh, the rest of you guys, rock on and have a good one.